Uh, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Arrow in the Head Show. John H. Felon, Lance L. Velchek. I don't know your middle name. I was just, I just, I felt like, felt Why good. Not? John, John H. Fallon. It's John H. Uh, Fallon, my email name, because when I was um, a teenager, my nickname from my friends was Johnny H. For Johnny Handsome. So, yeah. Oh, they're halfway there, I guess. <laughs> Things have changed with age, but back then, I was a hot little f- number, you know? Uh, okay, all right, fair enough. Well, good to see you, man, back again. We uh, are here on Halloween. I got my little uh, Halloween oh, shirt. Cool. Hey, hey, So, what are you, you drinking, man? Let's 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 go back to the right, basics, go back to the beginning. John. Yes. What are you drinking? Uh, it's just this shit. I figured it's um, a special occasion. Uh, which, by the way, guys and dolls, if you don't know, we have good news, bad news. So good news is uh, we're going to be talking about the movies that we've watched thus far during, you know, October, the spooky season. And of course, the movies we're going to watch, which is today, right? Halloween. Halloween. But the bad news is I just want to get it out of the way now, dude. Uh, we have been put on hiatus. What's your favorite scary movie? It's one of this. Which basically means um, this is potentially the last Aeronet show ever. Or the last Aeronet show for a while. It's been uh, quite the adventure. I, I feel like we've, we've grown. You know, it's it's the friends we made along the way. Oh, yeah. uh, as, as they always say, it's true, um, almost always. It's not about the destination, but the journey. And yeah, man, I never want to be on camera in my life. I'm quite shy, but I always thought this was fun sitting here and bullshitting with you, buddy. Before we get into more of that, I, for this special occasion, I brought out the uh, the gold label reserve, uh-huh. Johnny Walker, as a little goodbye. And then I am drinking it, though this is going to seem very sacrilegious, out of this Jason... Voorhees Ma, because it is Halloween and it's Halloween, so you know, you're allowed. You're allowed this particular sin. Before we continue, cheers to you, my man. It's been a great ride. And as and everybody else for hanging along with us. Yeah, cheers to all of you. Hello, my friend. Hey. I I love this month. This is my month. I've always said this. This is the only holiday. This isn't about love, forgiveness friendship uh religion patriotism there's actually nothing here except for like just paganism and murder i could have a a a, a torso on my lawn and people are like how festive so sean let's start uh here i don't care what order we're going in just tell me a movie that you made sure you've watched so far what is it and sell it to me please oh i'm not selling i mean so far Look, you guys and dolls have to understand, for me personally, you know, it's spooky season every month. So it's not like, oh, it's October, I'm going to watch horror movies. No, I watch horror movies year round, uh, pretty much, you know, at least one a week. So I've had like some of our uh, listeners uh, contact me and saying, oh, what are you doing? Spooky? For me, spooky season is the same thing as every fucking Week in a month, you know, other than the fact that, you know, like you said, you know, decoration and stuff like that. So I really appreciate that. In, in terms of horror movies, what I did watch recently, my chick and her kids and they were seen Dead Silence by James Wan. I hadn't seen it in a while, actually. I actually visit that. I visited that set like a bazillion years ago because that was, yeah, that was the movie that Wan did after Saw. That was his first studio picture. And of course, he got ass fucked. No lube. And actually watching it again, I, I saw it a lot. Uh, the studio interference. First of all, it's really, really lean. It's like 89 minutes. And there's not really any, like, the visuals are astounding. The score is, is great. The story is actually also pretty cool. And there's, you know, James Wan knows how to uh, generate tension, how to set up, like, you know, a, a great uh, scare set piece, you know, atmosphere push-ins, you know, man, man, the light, you know. Yeah, you know, he has a good eye. So, you know, he knows his shit. But uh, it felt very light. Very, very light on this watch. Again, I hadn't seen it in a bazillion years. Um, too light 
for my liking. But still, great score, great atmosphere. And I wish we actually could have seen his movie as opposed to Universal's. So I watched that one. And before I, I pass the baton to you, I'm going to tell you what I watched. And you tell me what you watched. And then we're going to say what we're going to watch today on Halloween. Yesterday, I took one for the team. The team meaning myself. Hmm. I forced myself out of morbid curiosity to watch Exorcist Believer. It's worse than I thought it was going to be. Ah, worse. Much worse. It is the most safe PC demon you've ever met, dude. There is no, you know, your mother sucks cocks in hell or none of that shit. That demon's polite. He's motherfucking polite, bro. Uh, yeah, it was a shit show, dude. I actually wrote it in the community tab. Uh, there's a line, and we're going to put it on principle, from Seven, where Brad Pitt's talking to John Doe, and John Doe's like, I'm bragging about, you know, I'm going to be remembered, all this shit. And Brad Pitt turns to him and says, You're no messiah. You're a, you're a movie of the week. You're a fucking t-shirt at best. That's what I kept thinking watching this movie. How you could take, and not that like the Exorcist uh, sequels have been great. Other than part three, everything else has been very meh, whatever, you know, from pathetically bad uh, with part two to Cheeseball, part four, Rennie Harlan, to Good Shot but failed uh, part four, Schrader. So it's not like the sequels are great. Actually, funnily enough, the TV show, I don't know if you ever watched the Exorcist TV show. No, it's not. It, I never gave it a chance, but it's funny. I'm, it was about fucking to say, awesome, dude. I was going to say, you're about to say it's good, and I've seen people online actually really sell it. I don't know. I'm not the biggest Fox guy outside of Mirror Children, but I, I've heard good things. You should at least, well, I saw both both uh, seasons, and I was actually very disappointed they, they canned it. But season one's really solid. Season two as well, but season one is really solid. So all that to say, Exorcist Believer was a lifetime movie yeah. version of the exorcist there is nothing edgy nothing daring nothing bold it's by the number it's incredibly politically correct for a movie about you know two girls uh being possessed by demons and yes there's one line the, patriarch the, the patriarchy bro bro are you fucking kidding me dude so let me get this straight these two priests Sacrifice their life to save your daughter. They keep you out of the room because you're not a fucking priest. You don't know how to deal with a fucking demon. They're protecting you. Say, like, mommy, stay out. Let us do our business. You know, power of Christ compels you. They die, both of them. And in this one, it's like, oh, in, in this one, they're having conversations. She's like, well, you know, I never got to see the exorcist. They wouldn't let me in the room. And like, oh, why not? Mm. The patriarchy, I guess. I'm not a member of the damn patriarchy. You know, it's just the fact that somebody thought, somebody, somebody out there thought this was a good line to put in. Um, I have no idea what the motivation for that line would be. Is it to appeal to the woke crowd or agenda or whatever? Who the fuck thinks... That her blaming the patriarchy for these two priests sacrificing themselves and keeping her safe because she's not a priest. I got nothing. But yeah, the movie's hilarious because, you know, suddenly she's a fucking expert at fucking exorcists coming in. Demon, be gone. Shut the fuck up. Oh. Legacy sequels, man. We're at the end of them and uh, I hope it's a quick death. Well, yeah, that man. dude, uh, Gordon Green, you know, God bless him. He did actually some really good indies. When he started out, no, yeah, his non horror stuff is fine, but his horror stuff yeah, leaves something to be desired. Yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll leave it at that. I like Halloween Ends more than Exorcist Believer. That, but that doesn't mean anything to me because Halloween Ends you could have a good time with because it's so stupid. You know, like I, I actually find it quite humorous when a bunch of small band kids are, are beating up a a jacked yeah, dorky guy. It's like, but I have glasses. You know? <laughs> it's like fun with that. But the exercise, it's like, yeah, man. I don't know. The, the trailer made it seem generic. and I, Generic, so bad, could be good at times where I could laugh at something. I could just tell the... I haven't seen it, so I could be talking on ass. And I'll see it eventually, but it'll be on my own time. It just looked... Like you said, it looked safe. It looked 
It's kind of like, beyond generic. It's yeah, yeah, generic. generic. It takes no chances. And it's stupid. I don't know if you've ever seen this movie called The Possession, which is about a Jewish demon, the Dubuk. And so, it, 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 yeah, it has actually, it has parallels uh, to, to the original Exorcist. It, it's a bit like a ripoff to some degree. And it stars, um, fuck, what's his fucking name? The dad in Supernatural. Great actor. Um, Negan, Walking Dead. Oh, um, yeah, he was uh, a comedian in Watchmen. Anyways, he, he plays a dad in The Possession. So all that to say, The Possession is a better Exorcist sequel than most Exorcist sequels. And it's most definitely better than Exorcist uh, Believer, uh, where the only thing they believe in is making the most mundane, generic, fucking patriarchy bashing piece of shit. I'm not surprised it didn't seem good, but I'm sorry that I don't know why you'd watch that in October. Save October for like some good hearts. I don't, I it, came, that... it came out in streaming and, you know, I right. wink, wink paid for it. I needed to get I'm a huge fan of The Exorcist, like the original Exorcist, Exorcist 3. Huge fan. And I'm also a fan of the drama that comes with this fucking franchise. Like fucking part, part, part two, the debacle that was. Actually, here's a clip of William Friedkin talking about his thoughts on Exorcist 2, which would apply to Exorcist Believer. Mr. Friedkin? To me, it's an abomination, not because it's a bad movie, which it is, a bad movie, uh, wrought by people who are, in my opinion, fourth and fifth rate intellects. But what they attempted to do was to trash the original material. He calls it the way, the way he sees it. And everything he just said right now totally applies with Believer as well. Of course, of course. But yeah, no, it's a fascinating franchise and the fact that, you know, it's one of the greatest horror, mo horror movies ever made. Then they made one of the worst sequels ever made. And then, you know, part three came in with William Peter Blatty, who wrote, you know, the OG. There's two cuts of that. Then part four was shot by Schrader. But then the studio reshot the entire movie with the same yeah. story, same actor, Stone Stars, uh, Skarsgård. But a different, like a McDonald's approach as opposed to like a mature approach. And now we have this fucking turd. Exorcist is a single a movie. That's actually pretty good, and they decided to cancel it because it's the best fucking thing, part three aside, that this franchise has put out. So I, I'm personally really fascinated with this entire franchise, the, the highs and the lows. It's a fucking soap opera. These are the days of our lives. Yeah, it's because it's a single story, and it really doesn't belong in, in a franchise, but it's forced into a franchise. There's a few of them like that where it's like, ah, no. So what do you watch so far? No, we, you know, I've been hijacking the convo. So last night uh, I showed a buddy of mine who's never seen it, Demon Knight, nice. one of my favorite movies. It holds up like it always does. It's just a fun movie, man. William Sadler, Dick Miller, Billy Zane, Jada Pinkett, Jada Pinkett. Yeah, yeah, just a good old fashioned man. And I was thinking about this. Well, I because I, I talked to my friend afterwards, and my friend's not the biggest uh, horror movie guy, but. I knew this would do it because it's like, okay, it's a, it's a movie where demons surround a house. It's a single location, pretty much story. Or not a house, it's a abandoned church, ex the hotel thing. That would have worked. I love the idea that there's this sort of mystical story about like, you know, the, the blood of Jesus that's been passed around and you become this sort of indestructible being that lives forever until the time comes where you got to pass it on. Survive. It's like such an interesting story to to sort of set up what is basically survival in one location i the, just the like that is pretty fucking cool pretty cool and it, like the, the humor works well you know it's funny but it's it, it doesn't laugh at itself it doesn't undercut tension with a joke it just it's more like the situations are so fucking zany they're like oh we gotta you know we gotta say zany, something here really zane well zane's fast going performance i've never had a, seen a man have so much fun like that man had the time of his life because i'm thinking with the wrong actor, that would have been grating and annoying. But dude, I'm sitting there being like, I, I love Sadler more than anything. Trust me. I, from Shawshank to Rocket Man to Die Hard Two, Die Die Hard Two. When he's naked um, doing the, the yeah yeah the katas or whatever the fuck. Um, he was he's death in uh, Bogus yeah. Journey. I mean, I think he was in the first episode of of Tales from the Crypt. Actually, if I'm correct, let's not forget about Trespass oh. with Ice Cube and Ice T. I mean, my dad and uh, Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton. Paxton and William Sadler in a cool little crime movie. 
I also, I haven't watched it yet, but I just got my Hellraiser. Uh, oh, the, shit. The, the four pack, yeah. which is cool because I got the extra, the silver cover because they have the work print. Oh, part four. I, yeah. I know. Finally released. I'm like, dude, if I, I'm the one guy. I'm the one guy who's like, oh, I've been waiting for that forever. So I'm going to hopefully watch that tonight, tomorrow. Watched a couple of Jason movies. Um, I watched six, seven, and three. Nice. What else? What else? What else? Uh, trick or treat. It's my uh, trick or treat. Yeah, no, no, not the one you like. Uh, the 2007 one. I watched Rob Zombie's Halloween two because I love that and nobody does. And this is my director really or theatrical. No, I always do directors. Even though there's a couple things directors I don't like, but I like the fact that the long ha- uh, mental institution scene. You know, in the theatrical cut, she's now just been committed, but in the director's cut. That's just a representation for the Tunnel of White Light because she's dead. I am also going to be watching From Beyond tonight, and I'm going to be watching probably Pup Master 2. I haven't seen that in a while. And I haven't seen, I got a nice little steelbook over there, and I haven't seen Pumpkin in probably like five years, so I might pop Pumpkin in, man. We'll see. We'll see. I, I, you know, yeah, I'm going gonna, gonna... to be solid, dude. Um, I remember I saw it on the big screen. Of course you did. Lucky yeah. Ass over here. I'm an old cunt. But, and I always felt it was long. Like the buildup takes a while. And then when it comes to, you know, once Pumpkinhead is unleashed, that the deaths weren't as hardcore as they should have been. That was my initial. Um, it's been a while. But I don't remember it being super gory. If you're, yeah. I guess that's correct. But with time, it's it's grown on me. Actually, funnily enough, Lance er- Enrickson retweeted uh, or Pumpkinhead uh, video story on Twitter or X, right? It's called X now, I think. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Lance. We love you, bro. He, he's something, dude. Uh, uh, sorry, guys and dolls. I, I'm just going to take a moment to just praise the living fuck out of Lance Henriksen. I'll just name two performances from him. Near Dark. Stone Cold. I could... I'll stop right there. I could go on and on at Pumpkinhead, uh, Aliens. Yeah, I could go on and on at Millennium, the TV show. But Near Dark. Stone Cold. He embodies his role. He shapeshifts. He's a in Stone Cold. He's a fucking biker, leader of a biker gang. And you know what? You told he is more convincing than real biker gang members I've met. He is so good. He becomes a different person. Near Dark, same fucking thing. The the the, the soulfulness that he brought to the Jesse character, the, the, a man who's lived all. He's seen this. He's seen that. You know, fucking civil war. And you believe it. You buy it. And any role he decides to play, he will sell you on it. He uh, he blows my fucking mind. He blows my fucking mind how good he is, man. So you know what, Lance? Not you. Oh. Mr. Henriksen. This one's for you, bro. Oh. So what am I going to watch? Well, first and foremost, you just inspired me. So I'm probably going to watch Pumpkinhead. Because Pumpkinhead, it's never a movie that I loved. It's, a, it's always been a 7 on 10 in my book. I probably probably say the same, but there's a charm to it's it's very atmospheric, and I, I appreciate yeah. any any kind of movie that well, goes Stan that way. Stan Winston, directorial direct. debut, yeah, or soul directing. Sure, yeah, yeah I guess. Yeah, so there was some shit with that movie. It got delayed. It got shelved. There was a lot of shit. Pumpkinhead wouldn't come out. He he directed it, and I don't know. I don't remember what happened. Guys and dolls, if you remember, put in the comment below. But I know there was a shit show with Pumpkinhead because I was reading Fangoria at the time. And uh, it just kept getting delayed and delayed, and finally it came out. I don't remember why, though. But Henriksen is fucking genius. And the creature, the design, the execution. Like, you know, there's Pumpkinhead 2, 3, 4, whatever. None of them come close to nailing that creature like Mr. Winston did. No. No. I think two is fine though, but I, I know what you're saying. Pumpkin's a weird uh, thing because it looks like a guy in a suit. I'm I'm a little more I think okay with that at times because I, I like those kind of movies. I'm saying that Pumpkinhead surprises me because it is perfect for a franchise. It's because it's this entity that just keeps you know it, it, it always turns around to whoever gets. But I'm saying like you could use that. You could go so many places. We could have so much fun. How do we, we have so many Exorcist movies where the, it's a completely contained story? But Pumpkin, it's like, well, no, it's just you want revenge, and then eventually you Call take its place. Call it a day, yeah. 
Yeah, so why do we only have basically one real one, an OK sequel by Bill Burr? Not Bill Burr. Um, Jeff Burr. Um, Jeff Burr, Although yeah. Bill Burr is fucking awesome. Yeah. I, I can't another remember. story, yeah. Um, and then the third was just dog shit. But I'm saying, like, you know, that's not one we could have just kind of kept going and tried it out a little more. I don't, just shows you that sometimes life doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. So what I am going to watch today, so tonight, uh, as I said, Pumpkinhead, you just inspired me. I will rewatch it probably before Halloween, but on Halloween night, I'm going to watch my two go-tos, uh, which are Trick or Treat, 1986. And we did an episode about it, I know. Yeah, we did. It's a movie I revisit every Halloween. Uh, it, it makes me happy. You know how, like, when you're sick and uh, you're in bed and you got, like, the, the covers and you're warm and comfy and, you know... Trick or Treat does that to me every time. I'm just happy as a pig and shit when I watch that movie. You know, there's a handful of movies that have that effect on me where, you know, I lay in bed and I got my nachos and I'm just happy as a pig and shit. So Trick or Treat's one of them. Raiders of the Lost Ark's another one. Okay, I was going to ask, name a few. I want to know these for you. <laughs> yeah, Trick or Treat, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Ramble, uh, First Blood Part 2. Um, I'm trying to lean more towards horror because we're a horror show i hear oh no at this point i just want to know movies in general that are yeah raiders lost spark trick-or-treat ramble two other comfort well this is going to be weird three's company i have tv shows too three's company of course. and cheers yeah they, they just make me really happy really happy and i feel i feel safe in yeah. in the like you. position you know in my safe space Cool, man. I'm down. I'm down. I, I have the same things, man. I'm going to name a couple. I, uh, for me, I would say Friday 13th as a whole, but if, if we're, you know, if, if I had to pick a couple that I could just like put on and just feel comfortable, that's going to be, um, probably six, seven and eight. As it was just like the, the ones I always watched as a kid a lot. Weekend at Bernie's, Tremors, The Crow. That's one of I watched so much as a little kid. I, I love that to death. I'll fight anybody. Um, well, that's where I was going, by the way, but I'll let you finish. TV shows, I'm going to throw this out for me. It's going to be Married to Children and Seinfeld. That's my, like, anytime yeah, you put Seinfeld it on. I'm just, definitely uh, one of them, yeah. So. Me, yeah. Seinfeld, dude. How many seasons? I think they had nine seasons or something. Yeah, because the last two were, <clears> yes, <throat> nine seasons. And I've watched all these seasons so many times, dude. I've watched Seinfeld. Uh, Seinfeld is probably the TV series I've watched the most. Like I've rewatched them over and over and over and over again. Uh, three companies, probably a second. Yeah. I was just like, give me this. Remember George is on that date and he's pretending to be a marine biologist. And he's on the beach and the whale washes up. So he's like, is anyone here a marine biologist? <laughs> All of his fucking goes to the thing. Oh, classic, man. Classic. The no, summer of George. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really doing the opposite is like an actual... Bro. We, I mean, that, that that's a deep episode for me. It was like, everything I've ever done has been wrong. Every intuition of her head has, has been incorrect. What if I just do the complete opposite? He goes, my name's George. You know, I'm, I'm 32 years old. I'm, I'm obviously paraphrasing. I live with my mother. And the girl's like, oh, I live with my mother, yeah. She flips her hair back. Hello. Yeah, yeah. That, that episode uh, definitely marked me as well. Uh, Trick or Treat uh, 86. Yeah, it makes me very happy. Sammy right. Kerr, Fuck the World. Fastway Soundtrack. Um, huh? you know, it's, it's, it's for an hour, it's shit I related to, you know, metalhead picked on, you know, the geek and everything like that, or metalhead geek, if you will. And I, I was that guy, you know, I had the long trench coat, long hair when I had hair, Iron Maiden t-shirt, yellow Sony Walkman in my ears, didn't have any friends in high school, didn't want to talk to people, except for a couple of metalheads and that was it. Although people didn't pick on me because um, they did. And then it went really bad for them. And I won't disclose what happened. But uh, I always related to that character. So the first hour is actually a really strong character, character study. Maybe a little too fucking severe, but it's realistic. You know, it's real. But then Sammy Kerr's the genie's out of the bottle. And then it becomes like, woo, you know, party time, you know, with... Uh, this motherfucker dancing left and right and killing people in dry but yet creative ways. So, yeah, no, it's a movie that's really warm to my heart. And the other one that I always watch every Halloween, as you mentioned it, is The Crow. Uh, classic. Uh, classic. It blew my fucking mind 
in terms of the marriage of visuals and music. Yeah. I mean, there's a music video aesthetics to it, I guess, to some degree. But I personally, at that stage, and I don't think ever since, ever saw a movie that was so strong visually and audio-wise. To the point where, you know, it would make up for the weaknesses, like uh, hernia and not smoking properly, some of the corny dialogue. Like hernia us and... Dude, inhale, bro. If you're not, if you can't smoke, don't smoke. If you don't smoke, don't smoke. If you can't smoke, don't smoke. But fair what enough, you're doing, it's embarrassing, you know? What, what is it? At some point, he, he smokes a cigarette like a joint. He's like, I guess you called it graffiti. Remember that shit? Dead. Yeah, yeah. It's after what's his face? Um, yeah, yeah. The angry uh, guy yeah. from Cobra. He yeah, played yeah. the, in Cobra, the opening kill, you know, the guy that shows up in the, grocery store i got a bomb here i'll blow everybody up so the crow has some problems you know with with some of the lines and it's corny and the angry guy and and stuff like that but the the aesthetics of it is so elevated the the visuals of it just uh you know like you have and it's married with the set designs you know you have the the circular window and he's standing there the crow and it's like a low angle pushing you know on him it push you know, fucking it's raining outside and stuff. Just visually, it's so fucking wow. It's like for me, it moves me just through visuals and music and sound design. Yeah, dialogue shit sometimes. Who cares? It's, it's one of the most beautiful movies I've ever seen. When he, and obviously, you know, Brandon Lee passed, as we know, you know, during the shoot, and they have his stunt double or a double. When he runs and grabs the uh, the window and does oh, yeah, that thing, yeah, in. and then comes back and right here, man, that's beautiful, dude. Yeah, that's what he notices the fucking the, the movie, bro. Cuts. Yeah, no, of yeah, course it has. Um, cuts, you know, and he heals. It, it's just a beautiful movie. So the crow, the best villains ever. Yeah. Oh Black yeah. And Michael Wincott. Yeah, yeah. Man, <laughs> whoa, dude, that dude, like. Pretty much steals the movie. He absolutely does. I've said this. If I had one wish in life is to have that man's voice. That man is the coolest voice of all time. What, what does he say like in the end when, you know, they have their their, their like final fight on the rooftop and he impales uh, Eric Draven. He said, well, gives you any consolation. You put a smile on my face. It's like has this little monologue. It's really fucking hilarious. Well, friend. And you're like, wow, only this dude could deliver it this way. He's I mean, so that, fucking awesome. That like woman hair, everything about it was any like dress kind of like like a, a fencer. The whole thing is bizarre, but it's so cool. It's so cool. <laughs> he is dressing like a fencer, yeah? Yeah. Like is this, you know, is this old England? What are we doing? You know, but, but it works. It all works because the movie is set in like a reality that's slightly heightened. And that's why Likely? it's such a cool movie. Well, Very heightened. I mean maybe the 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 visuals in terms of the world but like it's still just detroit it's still just gangs it's just i'm saying like the heightened parts is like very gritty it's you know it's like it's lambastic but it's it's still detroit and i like that i think that's a good balance man i mean of course uh, alex Porres from say correctly went on to do i think another great movie the dark uh dark city dark city yeah very similar visual style and then that was it and then those are the only two movies that had that gorgeous look because i i agree the crow is I think one of a handful of movies that I say that's what cinema looks like. Yeah. A cinematic look yeah. is the crow. It's it's um Blade Runner. You know, there's something about that look. Yeah, but the do. crow, the crow for me, anyways, you know, Dark City is a great looking film and Blade Runner is a great looking film. But the crow for me evokes emotion through its visuals. So it, it manages to make me feel. And also uh I might not say his name properly, but Graham Ravel, the, the composer. The music is... Yeah, all music great. Forget about it. So it's a movie that, for me, that makes me feel it. You know, I, I've cried watching The Crow, dude. I've cried, yeah, of course, it's always sad, you know, and everything, but I've cried because I was moved by the marriage of imagery, music, uh, performance. Uh, Brandon Lee is, is simply brilliant in it. Um... Which, you know, I didn't get from Dark City. Dark City is a great looking film, but there's no emotional resonance to it. No, but I'm saying, but the look, the look of Dark City is the same look of The Crow, though. 
But what you're saying is yes, because the, yeah. the Crow is a is an emotional movie. It's a love story. Yeah. It mixed with revenge. It's like that's why we love it so much. It's like, oh, heartfelt, soulful, but the guy's gonna go and get and tie up loose ends. It's like, oh, I like that. Yeah. I like that. But no, you're right. Like, wait, at the very end, when he's like on the grave and he's saying, like, shivering is cold, and like the, his wife, uh, Sarah, or is it Sarah? No, Sarah's a little girl. Little girl, um, Shelly. Shelly. Uh, no, yeah, Shelly. Yeah. Yeah. Shelly comes and like, she's kind of like touches yeah, him and she's all in white. It's just a fucking beautiful yeah. little shot, man. And that's how he goes. It's like, ah, right there. Or the bit, one of my key bits is when, you know, he, he comes back. And of course, it's, it's a lot of uh, a double for, for Brandon Lee. And he's flashbacking, remembering everything, you know. And then he, he hits the mirror yeah. and there's his reflection. And then the, that song by uh, The Cure kicks in. Boom, 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 boom. He starts putting makeup, you know. Yeah, forget about it. Dude. I like many fucking feel that shit. Dude. Yeah. We have many disagreements on music. Yeah. The Crow is not one of them. The Crow is a fucking great soundtrack. That is a yep. great, yep. one of the best film soundtracks uh, ever. Not saying it is the best, but it's definitely one of them. It belongs to be in the pile. One time I'm like, I think that's a badass kind of grungy rock. It fits the world. And I'm pretty sure, don't quote me, but I'm, I'm almost positive that I was told that all the songs in the soundtrack were made specifically for the movie. So like they they weren't, I believe, on other albums. I'd have to no, check I, on that. No, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're so right. Gives, so like, so it, it feels more into the world because it's like, oh, that's, that's a great song. But of course, I've heard that and this and this and this. It's like just that movie. Um, of course. Have you, uh, have you ever read the uh, James O'Barr uh, graphic novel of The Crow? I own it. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Okay. It's 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 good. Um, it's one of those that if that was adapted, it would be kind of a different story. Like I think they changed it, uh, not for the better per se, but I I I I'm very okay with all the changes. Um, if that makes any sense. But I've also read Do Android Stream of Electric Sheep, and I would say that would make an amazing movie as well. Yeah. But the changes they made to that to Blade Runner also make a lot of sense. So I I have I don't know, are you gonna say you like it or don't like it? Oh, I love it. I love yeah. it. Uh, you know, I have a crow tattoo. Oh, oh shit. There we go. Never knew that. Yeah. Look at this. Learning go. new things. Hiatus will bring out, you know, things. Things. Uh, it's funny. My chick always says, oh, you have a marijuana leaf. I'm like, no, honey. That's a crow tattoo. Uh, no, not quite. Not quite the marijuana leaf. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. But uh, yeah, no, the crow uh, is is a must see on, on Halloween for me. It's one of my favorite movies and um, I'm actually very excited to rewatch it. Uh, just before we go on the scene where he's playing guitar ding, and then he starts bashing it ding, and then it cuts to like this aerial shot. Just beautiful transition. Uh, just wow. That's filmmaking, dude. That's filmmaking for me. The Crow is just expert filmmaking, man. But I digress. Uh, the last movie I'm going to watch on Halloween, sorry about that, I know that was long, is uh, Halloween, 1978. If memory serves me right. Mm -hmm. Call it the movie that wouldn't be really good if there wasn't a great score. Because the score makes that movie happen, baby. So, I got a nice know, It's a go-to. It's a go-to. It's Halloween. Halloween. So, uh, but I'm sure you know this. You guys and dolls too. When they did the first cut of Halloween, like the rough cut, so no music was composed, they were scared. They're like, oh, fuck. We have a really, really boring movie. <laughs> really boring movie. What the fuck? And then, you know, Car Carpenter got to work on the score and applied the score and it changed the whole dynamic because now what was boring is suspense, fear, dread. You know, build music up. matters. When people think music doesn't matter, they don't really understand. I guess you can do things without music and be make it real. That's awesome. It's a very specific vibe. I'm down. But maybe because music's so important in my life, uh, it's very important in movies. In fact, I've only cried at anything because the scene and the acting was so beautiful, and the score mm -hmm. comes in. And just gives you that right hook, and yeah, you don't see it coming. It's like it's a sucker punch. I'm turning around, I'm like ah, here we go. What's name me one movie you've cried at? Beasts of the Southern Wild. I don't. I never heard of it. That's no, a movie? Br brilliant. Yeah, it's brilliant masterpiece movie. Of the Southern Wild. 
Yes. That's one. I can tell you shows. I I I definitely credit the end of um the Haunting of Hill House. The, uh, the guy brings his dying wife to the house so their spirit can live with their fucking baby that can't escape it. Ah, right there. Right there, man. Ooh, I'm not afraid. I mean, I'm I, do. I, I watched the first episode. I, I I couldn't I couldn't be fucked. I have a hard time with with Earth? unless it's like Seinfeld, Cheers, or you know, like you know, fast food, if you will. You know, I have a hard time dedicating myself to like like real shows. You know, Might like I know thing. there's one by Flanagan you recommended to me. It was like a religious thing. I forgot what it was called. Midnight Mass. It's it's a masterpiece in my opinion. So I never bothered because when I go to bed at night, I want to watch George Costanza making a fool of himself so I could laugh. And then I go to sleep and I wake up, you know, and, and take on the day, another pitiful day of my life. So for me to invest myself into something long term that's heavy and everything, it takes a lot. I think it comes with old age. Yeah, I mean, it's not your thing. I, I like long form storytelling at this point because I, I think movies have fallen off quite a bit. I mean, also, I think I get more emotionally attached if it's as long as it's uh, a contained story. You know, like I'm, I'm not really into this age of my life because I'm old. I can't risk multiple season shows. I'm not going to get invested in something because if it gets canceled, I get hurt. Um, the OA was a great show that I really got into. It's mystical and weird and it was canceled. And I was like, I can't do this again. But Flanagan does miniseries. So it's only like eight episodes and it's done. And I like Flanagan. He's like my guys. I call him uh, if if Otis Redding was a, it made horror movies, they'd be Flanagan. Yeah. Well, what about you? The name me one more because I know the crow, but give me something else. I, I I don't know, but I don't cry for horror movies, but like it has to be something really soulful and, uh, you know, uh, I cried at in um, Warrior. The oh, with um, mixed martial arts with Tom Hardy. That's, that, and, uh, oh, fucking Nick Nolte. Yeah. Should have won an Oscar. Let's be Nick honest. Nick Nolte playing my dad, basically. Yeah. That's a great movie. That's a great movie. Yeah, I, I related to that movie so much. I mean, MMA aside, but just the dynamic, the two brothers I have a brother and we had a, a strained relationship. And my dad was and is, you know, a hardcore alcoholic uh, at the end where, you know, the two brothers face each other and one of them's like injured. And I forgot. It's like a man child, man. <laughs> I fucking ball like a man child. So Warrior broke me interstellar. Oh, God. Yeah. They're stellar. Fuck. Oh. The, score, the score is so good. The score. Of course really it is. Your button, you know? That's a movie about, about life, man. About life. Yeah. yeah. Their stellar broke me as well. It's important to recognize heart and soul. I've said this forever. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe it comes with age. Um, anybody that I meet who's like, oh, I don't cry. It's like you're a coward and you have no soul. I agree. What song do you cry to? Name one. You don't have to name many. Just one or two. I'm curious. Have you ever sat in a corner of the room, lights out, maybe your the... life's not doing well, and you put on this particular song and you just fucking let it out? No. No, there's songs that move me, but if I were to cry to a song, that would just be the time. Like, there's not a song that does it. But there's songs that, like emotionally affect me and i would say like astro weeks is one of those um um but no there's no that i because the song doesn't would never affect me it would have to be something in my life so there's not a there's not a song where i'm like that song doesn't there's songs that i'm like yeah man wow oh man but no but i'm assuming you have some well obviously you know when i was a teenager and i had a really tough upbringing yeah i had some songs that really i back to like um Fate to Black by Metallica. Sanitarium by Metallica. Uh, but if I would have to choose one song, and I want you, because I know you and I are very different in terms of music. So, you know, I gravitate towards 80s metal, you know, 80s stuff. You know, I'm an 80s guy, you know. And, and you're more, for some reason, even though you're younger, you have an older soul than me. So you gravitate towards more, like, older shit, like, blues and jazz you know which is not really my thing so how about this let's do this right now and right. Then we'll, on, we'll cap it off I'm going to rec recommend one song I want you to listen to and okay. you guys and dolls too I want you to listen to it and you recommend one song I need to listen to and maybe and then you know you and I will talk and see if anybody got anything out of it so I want you to listen to 
Where All the Fools Sell Away by Ronnie James Dio. All the fools sell away. Oh, Dio. Yes. I want you to well, listen to that song. I want you to shut the lights, get a drink, put that song on, and be alone, and just listen to that song. And then shoot me an email. Let me know what you think. So are we recommending soulful songs or just any song? Oh, uh, this is soulful. Yeah, yeah. No, set no, up soul, the parameters soul. here. I like shit. That, like I, I, I've sat when I was a teenager. I've sat in a corner of a room in the dark. I didn't have drinks. I didn't drink back then. I was like 15 or 16 or whatever. Fuck. Listening to that song, bawling like a motherfucker. I had the cassette. Remember cassettes? Do you know cassettes? Yeah, I, I had a bunch of cassettes. Could I? What we, we do is you put one in on, and listen to the radio and try to time it so you can record the actual song without the guy yeah. interrupting or ending it. And it was always a yeah. shit show. So it, it's a it, it's a go to song for me. Even today, now as a grown man, you put that song on, I'll be like, just give me a minute. Let me just soak it in. Uh, it, it's a song that, that gets me, you know, every time, every single fucking time. So give me one of yours. I gave you one of mine. Okay. All right, well, yeah, I'm going thinking, deep, baby. So, uh, Independence Day by Van Morrison. Up and down the line. Actually, no, this one, but nice. Deep gets a deep cut off of yeah, uh, Saint Thomas Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'll remember that. Okay, well, I guess that's actually a really good spot to to jump off here. Being this is our last episode, of course, um, we want to bring in, obviously, Mr. Tyler from Modern yeah. Horror Movie Talk, just to kind of say his goodbyes and, and chat a little with us. So, Mr. Tyler Nichols, hello. How are you, sir? I'm doing wonderful. I mean, I'm sure you guys saw on the uh, Modern Horror, we just did the David Gordon Green trilogy for halloween so yeah. that was that was quite fun quite you're, you're quite you're fun. great man you're I brave. Was a little uh yeah i think i was a little a little aggressive but fair enough i think it was a good time i'm still <laughs> uh i stand by all my opinions on all those movies oh it's amazing i i think ever anyone that has not watched that needs to watch it for lance's arguments he is on fire the entire time it's oh. amazing <laughs> now that you say it thank you well, Tyler, are you are you drinking by any chance? Yes, I am actually. For once, I am actually uh, having a Halloween party this weekend, so I got a little. It's uh, Seven Up peach schnapps and some grenadine. Oh, well, cheers, uh, Big T. Yeah, good to see you, buddy. Cheers, yes, Nancy cheers boy. to all of you. You know, uh, guys and dolls. You know, when Lance and I started the Air on the Head show, you know, we mostly covered you know eighties, nineties uh, horror movies, and then we're like we need to address like you know more modern uh horror movies just to you know exp give the opportunity for the channel to grow reach a wider audience whatnot and we brought in big t and uh in my useless opinion he fucking killed it you know murdered it and uh, really um made the channel better so uh i'll raise my glass to you big t thank you for everything man Thank you so much. Thank Chuck. you guys for even uh, inviting me onto the channel in the first place. First as a guest, and then obviously as my own little day on the channel. Like, yeah, it's it's been an absolute blast. I love love having you guys on. Love coming on the show to talk about talk about various things. It's also it was also uh, it's kind of stretched a new muscle for me in terms of really keeping up with all modern horror movies. Oh shit! For <laughs> like, you, yeah. I have never been more on the pulse than I have been this year in that I have seen almost every major release opening night. Like it is, I will always look back on 2023 very fondly just because of what I was able to do with Arrow and the Head Show channel and Modern Horror Movie Talk. So thank you guys again for even inviting me to do it in the first place because I had a lot of fun. You rock, bro. You rock. I, I think uh, we all did an episode on Halloween 5, which still might be if my favorite, if one of my favorites, because we all aligned with the stars and just was punching down. I mean, it's it's brutal if you're a fan of that movie. And I think you actually were on the, the lighter side. But if you watch that, we're laughing at the best time. I absolutely loved it. But hold yeah. on. I, I want to interrupt and say, Tyler brought up a really good point about modern movies. Um, and Tyler, I hope you know where I'm going with this. Yes, I do. Um, 
because I think we need to celebrate modern movies. And I love the 80s and 90s, but movies keep getting made and we got to support people that make them. But it's weird because um, I think you made a movie, John. I think you made two movies, actually. It's mm -hmm. wild. Most people don't. So I, me and Tyler want to be... How are you guys doing, dude? <laughs> well, we want to say this, that the movie's out now on DVD, and I think it's super important that people buy it because Tyler um, and I did. And we're here today to say that John failed to make two movies. Motherfucker. Listen, most people will always want to make a movie. or want to write a book. want to write a screenplay. That's so adorable. So do I. But to make it is near impossible. And to get to the finish line is so rare that that that, that should be celebrated. And that you made a modern horror movie called Malicious. And we're here to support you. Uh, it'll be a link in the description. Get John's movie. It's awesome. Motherfucker went to the finish line. No, thank you for the free plug. <laughs> I appreciate it. You guys actually bought that fucking thing? Yes, of course. Yes, right here. I, I could have sent you a copy. Come on. No, we no, support. not. We support. Yeah, yeah we got to support you. you. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it, man. I really appreciate it. I didn't see that coming. Thank you. Well, I already I already watched it, and dude, you did some fantastic things from the work print to the final cut, like Thank the final cut, so you should be very proud. Thank you. Well, you know, we've had enough discussions about <laughs> But I went through it with this one, but you know, at the end, it is what it is, and uh, you know, uh, I'm able to stand behind it at this stage. Um, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, Tyler, what are you watching uh, for Halloween? Do you have a do you have a a set thing you do every year? Do you mix it up? I know you're having a party, but I, I am curious for the 31st of October. Because me and John kind of went over what we're watching. What are you digging on? Yeah. So I actually made sure to pull out the Blu-rays that I will be watching. Yeah, because yeah, I'm very I'm very on the ball with it. So every every single Halloween I watch this movie, but this will be the first year that I get to watch the 4K copy mm -hmm. of the original Halloween. So that's always literally I've already watched it once this month for the Joe Bob, the yeah. Joe Bob night, and I will still watch it again because it's that good. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, and I'm having a Halloween party, so we are going to be watching some fun horror movies. And first one up, you guys know I love me some Scream, so we're doing Scream 6 because none of my friends have seen Scream 6. And gotta gotta uh, rep my favorite series. And I actually had shown them, we binged the 1 through 5 last October, so this is like a nice little, nice little follow-up. And then we're doing... Slumber Party Massacre oh, yeah. 2. Oh, okay. Part 2 is awesome, dude. Yes. Wings. It is so much fun. And the girl from uh, um, Friday the 13th Part 5 and Psycho 3 is in it. And Which, who, uh, the who redhead. else? Oh, the redhead. Yeah, the redhead. But I don't... What do you mean, who else? Who's the main girl from? Come on, come on. From Wings, the girl from Wings. Are we not going to give Wings any credit? Am I all? Am I going to be doing all the Wings heavy I, thing? In I the already show? heard your Wings mentioned. That was I enough. Want, uh, yeah, <laughs> I've never I, but, watched Wings. So. Oh, it's fantastic, John. It's fantastic. I'll stick to Cheers, bro. Thanks. I haven't had a conversation with Lance in the last like month and a half that Wings has not been brought up. <laughs> well. Obviously, with the series ending, I'd had to get as much Wings content out there as possible. I would have spread it out more if I would have known, but here we are. Watch <laughs> Wings. Uh, it is fantastic. All right. Well, Mr. Tyler, thank you for, for joining in. Uh, yeah, we do appreciate you so this. You did a great job. And, um, you know, I think uh, all three of us had quite a few very entertaining conversations that I will be proud of for the rest of my life. Yeah, me too. Me too. Couldn't, could not agree more. And thank you guys so much for having me on. This has been an absolute blast. And hopefully we will be able to do this in a different venue. <laughs> like I said, we're not hiatus. But doesn't mean we're fully gone forever. No, does it? Lance? I would say this, um, you know, until things kind of figure out what's going on. You know, we're always going to be having little adventures. Um, we're going to drop our link trees and socials and all that in the um, description of the videos. So nothing's over quite yet. They're, they're, the, me and John will have other little things going on here and there. And we're going to figure something out. I want to say this, and this is super important to me. The most valuable thing in the world is time. Time. It's It's the only thing that we get that we can't get back. You can't get more or less of it. It's just about using it to the best of your ability. And so the fact that anybody would ever 
ever sit and listen to my bald ass just rant and rave and mumble and tangent about movies uh, means the world to me. And the fact that people gave me their time, I am quite appreciative. There's a lot of flaws in my personality, but one is not being uh, ignorant or aloof of, of people giving me the most important part of their lives. And so I do want to say thank you. From the bottom of my heart and soul, thank you, man. This has been a great time. Well, uh, I will echo uh, Lance's sentiment. You know, um, I would get, com you know, I got a lot of comments. I got also a lot of DM DMs and, and emails, you know, busting balls or saying this or nice things or, you know, a lot of people. And I'm sure you got the same thing, uh, Lance. You know, uh, I listen to you guys when we're going to work. You know, or I had a rough day, so I listen to you guys with a drink and makes me feel better and shit like that. So, yeah, thank you guys and dolls for sticking by us. Uh, you know, Lance and I gave it our best shot. But as John Rambo said at the end of First Blood, uh, nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, you know, Lance and I both have to marinate and process and and it's kind of like a warning period to be honest uh about about this show being put on hiatus let us do that and um we'll see we'll see what's next and as the great charles bukowski who was played by the great mickey work once said to all my friends hello my friends hey! to all my friends cheers brother thank you <laughs>